Welcome back, shop rats. Today we're gonna talk about horsepower. Ho, 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 ho. Let's stick around, watch the show intro. We'll see you in about 30 seconds. I'm Mike, and this is My Car's Shop. Working out of a 100 year old refurbished barn, bringing 35 years of experience to projects considered beyond repair. Vision, creativity, and problem solving are the essential tools in this place. Watch as we transform junk into polished metal miracles. This is My Cars Shop. I was having a conversation the other day with Just Mopar Joe. If you haven't seen his channel, check him out. Um, we were talking about horsepower and the specific topic was about getting 500 horsepower out of a 400 cubic inch big block and about how some people on the internet say it's so easy to get 500 horse. Well, to a point that's true if you want to write a lot of checks. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the bigger picture of horsepower, the history, and well, just a little bit of the stuff that I remember just to spur some thoughts for you and then we'll get into my thoughts and feelings and opinions and experiences. Uh, with horsepower. Back in the days of the horsepower wars, engines were measured by gross horsepower, which means the engine was put on a dyno with nothing else on it and run up to the max and horsepower was measured. And so that's, you know, back in the day, that's where you were getting these big horsepower numbers and stuff like that. And in 1971, a whole bunch of things changed and the EPA was starting to crack down on stuff and the Society of Automotive Engineers uh, got together and decided that it was probably better to get those numbers down for insurance reasons and others and they switched over to, I believe it was indicated Indicated horsepower i believe is what it was the difference is that they were measuring the horsepower of the engine with all the accessories on the engine so alternator water pump uh, power steering pump air conditioner all that stuff was put on the engine manifolds rather than headers all that stuff was put on the engine well we can just sum it up and say it had all the sauce on the engine, all the accessories, all the hoo-ha, belts, everything, fan, whatever. And that drastically reduced the horsepower rating of an engine. Did engines change a whole lot in horsepower? Well, they changed some, you know, uh, because they'd started dropping compression for emissions and going to different cam profiles and all that stuff. But when, when we're looking, oh yeah, the, the 454 back in those days was you know, 475 horsepower in 1969, but in 1972 it was only 300 horsepower. And well, you're comparing apples to Volkswagens there, so um, you just kind of got to keep things in perspective when it comes to stuff like that. But um, horsepower is, well... It is often one of the most misunderstood and, well, how do we put it? Exaggerated numbers, <laughs> exaggerated things that people will talk about on their car. It's easy to put a pencil to paper and come up with a number and say, oh, my car has this much horsepower. I would say in general, if, if you've calculated your horsepower like that, cut that number by about 40% and it's probably a bit more accurate. I've spent a fair bit of time running dyno cells mostly on um, emissions calibration and uh, well performance definitely but it was mostly for a uh, three-cylinder two-cycle orbital engine out of uh, Australia. We were developing the uh, direct injection system and running uh, air fuel ratios up to 30 to 1 um, to get uh, maximum horsepower and so forth without melting the engine down and keeping our uh, emissions levels down. And that's another topic for another day we can get into. Um, and I've been around V8s on dynos and been around drag racing and stuff like that. Not nearly as much as a lot of you guys have, so don't misunderstand where I'm coming from. But I've had some experience. And 
horsepower is a difficult number to get. I mean, horsepower is really a calculated... Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, it's a calculated measurement based upon torque and RPM, okay? A um, little more complicated than that, but for simplicity's sake, uh, it's a number that indicates how much power the engine's putting out. Now, interesting also that torque is really the number that's the seat of the pants number more than horsepower, but, you know, it's still, oh, I love having 500 horsepower under my hood. When I worked in engineering as a fuel systems engineer, I did a lot of formulas and spreadsheets, and I actually, if I could find it, I, it's around somewhere. I, I've got to keep digging. I've been looking for it for a while. But I had a, a, a formula that I had put together that you could take tire size, axle ratio, transmission ratios, blah, 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 engine RPM, engine horsepower, all of those numbers together and get an estimated ETA on what your car would run. And as part of the way I built my GTS, uh, I used guys that were, well, I didn't use the guys, but I used friends, cars that were drag, drag racers and used their numbers to help build the formula. So it was real world stuff. And uh, it was amazing as you put those numbers together. We had a couple known dyno uh, runs uh, that helped me put all that together. And... Um, it was amazing how accurate that was until you got up into like less than oh, seven and a half to eight seconds and then everything went out the window because that's just a completely different world when you start getting into pro stock, uh, funny car, top fuel speeds, the, the numbers just become astronomically ridiculous and uh, it's a, that's a completely different world than the world I live in. But the point is... Uh, the thing that always astounded me as I was putting the formula together, and I, and I know some friends of mine continued to use that thing for a long time later, and they would talk about just how accurate it was. Um, how low the horse num power numbers would be for some cars that were like super fast. Um, it, it's crazy. And again, real world. Right? We're not talking rear wheel horsepower. We're talking crankshaft horsepower here. There's the, the world of bench racing, and then there's the real world. And you know, the only way to know what an engine is putting out is to put up or shut up, fork over the bucks, and put that motor on a dyno and get actual measurements and actual numbers and uh, play with a few things and know what your air-fuel ratios are and uh, check your exhaust gas temperatures and all that stuff and make sure that engine's running efficiently. And exactly, that's the only way you're going to know exactly how much horsepower that engine's putting out. Now, if you want to get real crazy and really know what's going on with your car, you would pay the bucks, get your engine put on the dyno, put the engine in the car, get everything hooked up the way you're going to run it with the proper torque converter or the transmission clutch assembly or whatever it is you're going to use, gears, tires, all that stuff, and then put it on a chassis dyno and see what the comparison is. Is the number that you're seeing at the rear wheels make sense based upon what you saw at the crankshaft or do you have something else going on in your drivetrain that's causing some loss now that's that's a lot of money to spend and at the end of the day you can do what i always used to do and just take it to the track and see how it runs um, but you know if you really 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 want to know the numbers but the whole point of what what mopar joe and i were talking about is getting horsepower out of an engine it's not as e easy as some people might think, you know, uh, well, put in a can, put on a good set of heads, put on a set of headers and a good carburetor, put a big, big, big carburetor on it, and you're going to be good to go. No, it's it's a lot more complicated than that uh, to get some good horsepower out of it. And in fact, I've actually seen engines where some of those modifications were done, and they became grossly inefficient. Now, understand that I come at things from the perspective more of street performance than drag racing. I have a lot more experience building street cars than I do race cars, but I've been around both and I've done both and been involved with both all my life. Let me clarify that I've not done it professionally like my buddy Sean who is uh, out there on, uh, he's either, he's a, I think he's crew chief now for one of the uh, 
Funny Car teams are one of the top fuel teams, and if I said the team, you'd know who it is, but I don't want to pinpoint him. Um, you know, we went back in the day when he was involved in the same engineering company I was. We used to talk a lot, and uh, we had a lot of fun um, talking about stuff. But his knowledge <laughs> far surpassed my knowledge back then, and of course, would be I, I would be like a kindergartner uh, in my knowledge and experience compared to what that man knows today. And I would even say that about just Mopar Joe. Uh, when it comes to track knowledge and experience, he's got a lot more than I do. Um, but he had mentioned in, in one of my community uh, discussions, he said, hey, this would be an interesting topic to talk about. And he's going to talk about it too. And it's good, I think, to get a couple people's perspective. So I want to make sure that you understand I tend to come at things more from the, from the perspective of street performance because that's what I've done a lot more of. My personal rule of thumb is it's not terribly difficult or expensive to get one horsepower per cube out of whatever engine you're working on. So if you want to get 300 horse out of a 300 cubic inch engine or 400 horse out of a 400 cubic inch engine, you can do that relatively inexpensively. But you want to get more than that, when you start getting more than one horsepower per cube, you're going to start spending some pretty serious cash and have to do some some homework. Um, it's it's so e I'm, I'm so I'm involved in a lot of different online forums and uh, I see so much misinformation about this carb and this intake and this cam on and set your timing here and you're gonna get seven thousand horsepower out of your two hundred cubic inch straight six engine. Okay, I'm exaggerating. I'm being a bit of a smart aleck. Um, but I find that most of the experts' knowledge, uh, the armchair experts' knowledge, comes from, um, from nothing, uh, from speculation, from uh, uh, stories, from over-exaggerated memories of things back in the day, of things they've read that's misinformation or false information and even things like well, Hot Rod Magazine said and such and so magazine said and well I mean they are a little more trusted source but eh, you know eh. you have to remember that a lot of these numbers these advertised numbers are pulled out of thin air Add this cam to gain 50 horsepower. Add these headers to gain 35 horsepower. Add this carburetor to gain 50 horsepower. Well, guess what? You add all that together and, and put all that on your engine, and it's not going to add up. It's not going to come out to, well, 50 plus 35 plus 35 plus 50 equals 170. Uh, no, that's, that's not how it works. The biggest horsepower you're going to get out of an engine always comes from your bang. Okay? And... Uh, yeah, it's got to breathe, don't get me wrong, but compression is power, period. Or cylinder pressure, to be more accurate, cylinder pressure is power. So whether you do that mechanically by a bigger squeeze to squeeze the fuel harder to get a bigger explosion out of your air-fuel ratio, or you do that mechanically by uh, increasing the cylinder pressure with a supercharger or a turbo, or if you do it chemically by getting more air oxygen, and fuel into the engine with nitrous oxide um, that's the way to gain the horsepower yes you got to make the engine breathe and all of that stuff um, but you also got to have the parts that are going to hold up to it because durability is a big thing there are definitely viewers here on the channel who i know can chime in with intelligent conversation who know a lot more than i do like you know, the dodge whisperers been a professional mechanic and built a lot of performance stuff uh, Ed from Ed's Machine, that guy is knowledge, um, you know, like I said, PhD level versus my grade school, Joe, must, just Mopar Joe, a lot of world experience. The guy's over at Bad Tree Productions, um, they've been building cars for years and they've spent years and years on the racetrack. They have real world experience you can learn from. Um, so each one of us offer a little different piece. Uh, my experience, I've done a lot of forced, I don't want to say a lot, I've done some forced induction work. I obviously own a nitrous car, um, so I have experience with that. And again, I come at things more from the street performance aspect than I do from just drag racing, although I am always have a foot in both worlds. So I'm kind of rambling, I know, but these are my thoughts on the horsepower thing. Um, you know, getting 
500 horse out of a 400 cubic inch horse, a 400 cubic inch engine. Um, as Joe said, <laughs> if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And uh, I'm not saying it always has to be a money game, but there comes a point with horsepower that if you're going to get the horsepower out of an engine, the more you want, the more you're going to pay. That's just the bottom line. So uh, these are my thoughts today. Uh, I'm kind of rambling. I'm a little bit distracted today, both because of the traffic today and uh, because of the job that I have had taking on a new customer today. And my mind is subconsciously working on that. And you know, when it comes to thinking, I'm not very good at it. So I really appreciate you listening to my blathering. Uh, tell me what else you'd like me to talk about or things you'd like me to elaborate on. I just kind of hit the highlights. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not pretending to be an expert. I have some experience and I have some perspectives, uh, which is what Joe wanted me to share. So thanks for that opportunity. I appreciate it. And uh, I think that'll do it. We're over on the face thing. We're over on Instagram forward slash like our shop. And one more thing. This is the most important thing on the channel. This is the one thing that I do know something about. Rock!